Hello everyone and welcome to another Lightroom over to Portrait Studio Max retouching tutorial. Um, the thing I really like about this software is the fact that it pretty much automates the entire retouching process. Of course, you know, with every photo it does require a little bit of tweaking here and there with each image, but for the most part, if you can get your presets just right for each individual subject, then for the rest of the time, you're pretty much just going to be saying, okay, yeah, apply this filter. Oh yeah, apply it on this one too. It's just a really, really great piece of software. So let's just jump right into it. So this is a photo shoot I was doing for a magazine uh, last week. And um, this is one of the ones that they requested. So of course, I'm probably not going to release this as far as uh, which photo shoot it was or for which magazine. But either way, so let's just go right into it. Um, I've selected it in Lightroom. Um, I've pretty much done all the general corrections that I like to have done to an image. Uh, really what this is, uh, this tutorial is for is just facial retouching. So everything else I've already corrected for as far as uh, the image balance and all that tone curve, uh, everything else, you know, detail, uh, not too much. But um, actually this brings up a good point when it comes to detail. Make sure that you have enough in your image because otherwise the Portrait Studio Max software does have a hard time finding some of the edges if it's too soft. It's not all the time, but I know sometimes people like to put out their more kind of soft filters and stuff. But the software itself, uh, Portrait Studio Max, does need some pretty defined edges to find uh, the facial lines because of its facial recognition uh, software. So I'm going to add just a little bit more sharpening to it, not too much, and then we're going to go right into it. So uh, if you've installed the plugin for Portrait Studio Max, then all you have to do is right click, go to edit in, as long as you've also got Lightroom preferences set to Portrait Studio Max, uh, Portrait Pro Studio Max, sorry, as one of the external uh, editing softwares like Photoshop, then it'll pop up over here. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And we're gonna say edit a copy, so we don't accidentally uh, make changes to the original. I usually do TIFF, uh, Adobe 98, 16-bit, and resolutions 240 with a zip compression. If you want to know why, you can uh, just leave a, uh, uh, put something in the comments below and I'll answer your question. But just for the purpose of saving time, we're just going to go right into it. Okay, so as you can see, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to locate the face inside the photo. Now, the um, majority of the background of this image has a lot of stuff going on, so it may take a minute for it to find it, and if it's not exactly correct, then, oh, look at that, never mind. Portrait Pro Studio Max, you blow me away every time. Now, here is a major step that I find. Uh, some of you guys have mentioned that the software moves too slowly and I completely understand, I've been there before. So here's what happens. If you make any adjustments to the outlines over here while it's applying the preset over here, then yeah, it'll adjust the uh, changes in uh, real time. So what I do is go up here to the back button and it brings you to the initial step, which is actually step one, where you can adjust the individual outlines without actually applying any of the changes to it, which makes it render a lot faster. If you click in any of these individual squares, it'll zoom into that portion. Hello there. And just tweak it a little bit. Now, some of these outlines, you can get really specific with them if you want to, but I found that it's not super, um, it doesn't make a huge difference, uh, but you know, some of us, if you're a photographer out there, chances are you're a perfectionist like me. Now, the outline around the eyes is pretty important, and also just making sure the iris is where it's supposed to be and the pupil. And then once you've got those, you just click on the outside, see how the uh, little icon here is a minus, so it'll zoom out. Do it over in this box here. I do find that making sure that the eyebrows are correct does help when it comes to uh, things like, you know, uh, if you want to do some uh, facial restructuring, you know, changing the shape of the face, that kind of stuff. But since obviously she doesn't really need it, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Really, again, it's the inside of the eyes that need the most attention pretty much for any picture. Here 
there we go, nose and mouth. Now the point of the nose, the tip of the nose is actually uh, pretty important when it comes to uh, shaping the face, so make sure you got that one right. And then it does have the option of making the lips open or closed. And doo -doo -doo -doo. And the reason is because if we leave it open, then it's going to look for things like teeth. It'll try to whiten the teeth if it if the outline suggests that the lips are open, but since these are pretty much closed for the most part, even though the lips are parted slightly because we can't see the teeth, I'm going to go ahead and just make it think that the mouth is closed. Otherwise, it'll try to whiten the inside of this area right here, and it just doesn't look good. Okay, and you caught me. I'm being a little bit of a perfectionist here, so uh, looks like we're good here, so I'm going to zoom out. And then just, you can also adjust the hairline a little bit. Now the jawline is, in my opinion, probably the most important. So um, make sure you've got all that stuff lined up properly because if you do decide to change the structure of the face, if the jawline is not correct, then it will not look right. Okay, so we are good to go. You can go up here, click on next or click the space bar. Okay, so now that our outlines are actually corrected for, usually what I do is I zoom out first, just try to take a look. Now, you can go through and create you know, all of the sliders the way you want and see what I mean as far as making sure the jawline is correct? Because if it's not, then it's not gonna change the shape properly. I try to keep this to a minimum unless you have a client who is dead set on you know wanting to look different than they ha normally do which I usually try to avoid one thing I do pretty much for every photo that I do is I do elongate the neck Mac to the maximum just because most of the time people do don't have the best posture so this is a good way to kind of correct for that and it just kind of gives the illusion of them standing nice and tall so um, let's see now skin smoothing obviously you're going to want to be close in for that maybe zoom out just a little bit sometimes it's a bit too close um, i always click on the uh, edit skin area and just making sure that it's got all the areas where it's supposed to be everything looks good you can also paint over it or uh, subtract from it sometimes if the uh, hair color is close to the same color as the skin then it might accidentally apply it to the skin or to the hair as well. So um, now I have actually created a preset for this uh, person. So I'm going to click it. And this preset was made from a previous image. Now it doesn't look exactly the way that I would like for this particular image. So what I'm going to do is just go in here and tweak just a little bit. Now her eyes don't really have like a lot of like baggage underneath them, but because it was slightly overcast that day, it did kind of create the illusion that she had kind of dark circles under her eyes. So I'm going to correct for that just by increasing the around the eyes slider just a little bit. And the same for uh, thin wrinkles and fine shadows. And that really helps. The around eyes thing is, you know, lighten eye bags, smooth eye bags, smooth crow's feet and you can adjust it for each one the left eye or the right eye really it's just kind of playing around with it and then texture i usually apply texture a lot because if i don't then the skin smoothing will kind of create sort of a plasticky look to the face and we obviously don't want that and one thing i did do because uh, it was flat lighting because it was overcast was I did apply uh, skin lighting controls uh, usually I bring the contrast down quite a bit if I want to fill in shadows under the eyes you can also uh, move this guy around a little bit and see if you remember when I first did the preset it was dead center but since her face is kind of turned slightly this way and the light source the main light source is coming from that direction I'm gonna move this guy over this direction 
Uh, you can increase the contrast if you want, but as you can see, it does create sort of like a softening effect. So I usually kind of go down with the contrast if I'm trying to fill in shadows. And when it comes to skin tones and stuff, I wouldn't worry too much about skin tones in this software. I would uh, adjust for that later when you re-import it back into Lightroom because Lightroom tends to be a little bit more accurate when it comes to color correction and stuff. Yes, you can adjust for skin color in here, but I would only recommend it if you are um, you know, doing something in Lightroom and you're done, done, done before you bring it in here. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of magenta to it. For the most part, this here is, you know, green versus magenta. It's more of a, like the tint. You can also correct outside of the face, so that way the skin on the arms and the legs and the chest match the face. Um, you can also make them more tan, which actually is kind of nice, but I tend to do that in Lightroom using the, uh, uh, the luminance on the orange lighter, which you'll see in one of my other videos. And then of course there's also picture controls overall, like blue, green, not, as you can see, these are definitely not something that we wanna do in here because Lightroom does a much better job. And last but not least, I'm just gonna go in here and just play with the eye controls a little bit, bringing up a little bit of color in the iris a little bit of brightness and clarity in the uh, the white part of the eyes around the iris and the pupil. And yes, of course, later I will go back and get rid of these stray hairs. I don't know, I kind of like the way they look. What do y'all think? Okay, so looking at the before and the after, let's go back in. Definitely a little bit more uh, color and life to the face, um, a little bit more energy going on. Uh, the freckles are still there, but we did kind of soften and lighten the face a little bit. Of course, if you've got someone with a lot of freckles that you really want those to stand out, uh, you can tweak with the skin softening if you want to, but we're gonna leave it the way it is. And also, um, the last thing I like to do is just double check the hair area. And same keyboard shortcuts in this software as uh, Photoshop. Uh, using the brackets tool to enlarge your brush. And this is kind of like, this brush is kind of like a auto mask feature. Whatever you sample inside the small circle, it will automatically find it in the big circle. And also um, sometimes the mask in uh, Portrait Pro Studio Max, uh, it has sort of like a lower opacity than the full opacity, so you may want to just make sure you repaint over the areas that it already supposedly grabbed, uh, and the reason is because it may not give the full effect, but that's up to you. And click OK. And then you can change the color if you want, or you can bring down the amount of the color change. See, if I go too high with it, then we lose some of those shadows, so I'm going to come down just a little bit. And then hair tidying mode, this is probably one of my favorite features in the software. Uh, what it does is it, um, it kind of smooths out some of the, you know, I hate to use the word cobwebs, but you know what I mean, uh, where the hair is just a little bit askew and you just tweak it just a little bit to where it still looks real, but it's still kind of nice and shiny and smooth. There we go. And that's it. So once again, thank you for tuning in. This is Dustin Meyer. Uh, this sh uh, retouching tutorial with uh, Portrait Pro Studio Max is brought to you by Portrait Pro Studio Max as well as Nikon USA. So if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Um, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Uh, and today was brought to you by Portrait Pro Studio Max and Nikon USA. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in for more tutorials. This is Dustin Meyer signing off and have a good one, everybody.